Hey guys, my name is Michael Watson and today I'll be telling you all about the EQ8 audio effect. So in your browser, go to audio effects and then under EQ8, just click and pull it into your track or down here where it says drop audio effects here. So what is EQ8? EQ8 is Ableton's equalizer, which features up to eight parametric filters per input channel. Equalizers are useful for changing a sound's timbre by either boosting or cutting certain frequencies in the audio. EQ8 has three different modes of operation, either stereo mode, left and right mode, where you can change the EQ for the left channel and have a separate EQ for the right channel, or your MS mode, which is your mid-side mode. MS mode provides the same functionality as your left-right mode, but for signals that have been recorded using MS encoding. So now I'm editing my right channel. To change your left, just click over there and you see an L. And you can also automate the different channels and create crossfade type stereo sweeps. Okay, now you've got eight filters and you can activate or deactivate as many as you want by clicking at the bottom here on your one, two, three, and so forth. Each time I click on one of these rectangles, you can see another little circle appear and your curve is kind of changing a little bit. Now, if you've got a fresh EQ8, then everything is going to be straight because you haven't changed any parameters yet. Now you may have noticed when I activated eight, it put the slope in here and you can change the type of filter for each of these eight filters by clicking on this drop down over here and you can choose whether or not you want a low cut or whether you want some kind of band pass or a notch and so forth. Now you can choose between a 48 or 12 dB low cut, which cuts frequencies below the specified frequency. This is your low shelf filter, which boosts or cuts frequencies lower than a specified frequency. Then you've got your bell curve, which boosts or cuts over a range of frequencies. Then you've got your notch, which sharply cuts frequencies within a narrow range. And you use your Q control to change this range. A higher Q will result in a narrower range and vice versa. Then you've got a high shelf, which is like your low shelf, except it boosts or cuts frequencies higher than a specified frequency. And then your bottom two are either your 12 or your 48 dB high cuts which cut frequencies above a specified frequency. If I have seven and I give it a high cut, see how it changes. So if something weird like this has happened, it's probably because you've got the wrong <laughs> filter type. Once you've chosen which of these filters you want active and what kind of filter they are, you can click and drag on this little circular icon with the number five or whatever number filter it is so that it boosts or cuts the frequency that you want to boost or cut. You can also use the controls on the left here to change the frequency or the gain or the Q. And say you've got more than one filter active, you can click and drag somewhere on this black graphic display and just rubber band select. And then once you've got all selected, you can just click and drag one of them and edit many at the same time. Moving to the left or right changes your frequency, moving up or down changes your gain. And uh, unlike a high cut filter, you can change the gain of this notch filter as well as the Q. So if you're pulling up and down with your mouse, you're changing the gain. And if you're holding Alt while you're pulling up and down with your mouse, you're changing the Q over here. Just a quick tip. If you say cutting something over here with this eighth filter and you want it to be cut even more drastically, you can activate another filter. So I'm activating seven. I'm creating the same filter type and I'm just superimposing that over eight over here so that they have the same settings. And that way your cut is just going to be even more drastic or your boost. Now you've also got an expanded view. So if you go to your title bar on the left, you've got this little triangle and you click it all of a sudden, EQ8 looks like this. The graph has been moved up, which you can resize if you want it bigger or smaller. And at the bottom, you've got controls for all of your different frequencies. So when you're not in expanded view, you've only got the controls on the left here, and they change depending on which filter you're activating, either by clicking at the bottom here, so that number five goes light gray, number three goes light gray, or you can click on these circles. And when they are a solid color, then that's the active filter. And those controls you can change here. But in expanded view, you can change those controls for all of the filters. So you've got your frequency, your gain, your Q, your filter type, and whether that's active or not. These controls on the right stay the same, whether you're in your normal standard view or your expanded view. And in expanded view, you've got this extra block of analyze functions on the left, which I'll get to a little later on. 
Let's just move through all these controls on the right. So this little rectangle with the little lines is your analyze button. And if I've got a sample playing, and I switch analyze off, you don't see the frequency spectrum in light gray anymore. This is without the analyze on, and this is with analyze on. Now you'd want to have analyze on if you are struggling to hear maybe which frequencies are louder than others. I can see there's quite a big low end. So I might use that information to influence my EQ choices. Then to the left of that, you've got audition mode. Now, if you've got audition mode active, these little headphones, they go blue. And if you click and hold a certain filter with your clip playing, it'll preview the effect that only that specific filter is having on the audio. And that's another great tool if you're just trying to figure out exactly where to put your EQ changes. Then below that you've got your three stereo modes, which I mentioned at the beginning of the video. And this edit rectangle is only active in your left right mode or your MS. Then you've got adaptive Q. You can either toggle this on or off. If adaptive Q is on, then the louder your signal is, the bigger your Q value will get in your EQ cuts or boosts. This kind of behavior is based on old analog EQs, and generally speaking, it results in a more even output volume. If you guys aren't sure what Q is, or even frequency and gain, or any of these more standard terms that I've been using, please let me know in the comments. I'd be happy to make a intro to EQ video if you guys are interested in that. Under adaptive Q, you've got scale. And scale over here changes the amount of gain applied to all active filters. You can see in the graphic display how the curve changes. If it's high, then the gain increases, and if it's low, the gain decreases. Scale has no effect on low cut or high cut or notch filters. And then underneath scale, you've got gain, which boosts or attenuates EQ's overall volume. So the difference between scale and gain is gain changes the whole volume. It has nothing to do with your actual filters. It doesn't impact those in any way. Whereas scale, as you can see, actually makes your filters either cut more or boost more. So this will actually change the timbre or the tone of your audio, whereas gain is only changing the volume of your resulting audio. Now let's jump back to expanded view and let's look at this block on the left. This block on the left is related to your big graphic display over here. Even more specifically, it has to do with your analyzed display. So this gray graph. Now block determines the number of samples analyzed for each measurement. So each time you see a measurement in light gray over here, it's analyzing a bunch of samples. Now if you wanted to analyze more samples at once so that you can have a, I suppose, higher definition display, which would be more accurate, you can increase your block size. You'll notice a tiny difference, especially in the low end if you look. When you have a small block size, it's kind of just like a curve at the end. Whereas if you've got a high block size, you can actually see the individual peaks and troughs. Then you've got your refresh time, and this determines how much time should pass between measurements. We're talking very small amounts of time here. The longer the time between these refreshes, the less accurate your data in your display. And then you've got your number of averages. And this has to do with how these calculations are displayed. If you've got a lower average over here, then your display gets updated more often, which means this display is more accurately representing your data. And if your average rate is higher, then you're seeing more an average over time. See how slow that moves. With that lower average, you can actually see the kick movement a lot better. Then there are even more controls that you can't see and you only access them when you right click or command click on the title bar to get your context menu. Now at the bottom you see oversampling. If you enable this option, oversampling will cause EQ8 to internally process two times the current sample rate, which allows for smoother filter behavior when adjusting higher frequencies. There is a slight increase in CPU usage with oversampling. Then there is a, another option that I don't have, but if you see something that says shelf scaling legacy mode, then this means you've opened up a project file that is older than what your current Ableton Live version is. And in older versions of Ableton Live, say Ableton Live 8 or so, then the shape of EQ8's shelf filters was different. So if you enable shelf scaling legacy mode, then you'll just be updating your shelf filters to the newer ones in Live 9. 
Now, a couple of uses for EQ8, or just EQs in general. You can put EQ8 on individual tracks. Say you've recorded voice and there's an irritating high frequency hum. You can try and correct that with EQ by cutting out some of the higher frequencies. You can use it to clear any vocal tracks or just shape your drum loops to something more suited to your taste. You can also use EQs very successfully on master tracks to help with your mixing and mastering. And one of my favorite uses for EQs are for ear training. I'm a massive fan of ear training, especially with this little audition function over here. Get to know your frequency spectrum. Get to know what 100 hertz sounds like. Get to know what 10k hertz sounds like. In fact, and here I'm going to get really controversial, I reckon if you practice hard enough, you'll be able to recognize individual pitches. Now, you may have noticed with most audio effects in Ableton Live, if you click this little triangle, you get side chain, but here you get your expanded view. If you want to do a side chain type effect with EQ, then I would suggest you get to know your multi-band dynamics audio effect. You can check out this video, which explains in detail how to use it, as well as how the side chaining function works. And if you want to know more about ear training with EQ, you can also use EQ3 to train your ear, which I would suggest to be a good starting point if you've never heard of this concept and you don't even know the difference between low, high and mid frequencies. So thanks for watching. I'm doing a video like this for all of the audio effects. So if you're interested in this, please hit subscribe and I will see you soon in the next one.